Hello, Bob. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? How you been? <laughs> Hanging in there, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Good to see you, man. It's been a long time. Yeah. I was looking to uh, forward to doing this interview in person, man, but, you know, things got really crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a uh, good thing we um, put it off because uh, New York's in lockdown, man. I mean, they're, it's, crazy, it's man. enough. It's insane, man. But <laughs> it's crazy because New York, California, many other states, people are just literally stuck at home. So I, you know, yeah. obviously, it's, it's a crazy situation. That, um, that it is. Yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully, hopefully a few weeks of this crap and it'll be done, but who knows? So what kind of effect do you think this will have on bodybuilding? Because I know a lot of shows are being canceled, right? Some things are still up in the air. What do you think? What, what's the big effect that will have, you think? Well, I mean, it depends on how far it goes. Um, if it goes long, then it'll have a huge effect because we'd have to make, we'd have to, uh, make all kinds of provisions because nobody would be qualified. So the USA, the Nationals, the North Americans, uh, the uh, uh, universe, you know, we'd have to come up with some sort of a resolution as to why, how people could compete the other problem is is with gyms closed right now and things like that nobody can really get ready <laughs> so exactly. uh you know it, it could delay things i don't think it's going to be that long i think in i think literally in a couple of weeks we'll see a big push of to, to get back to normal and then by um i think sometime in may i think yeah everything's kind of back to normal so did you, uh, what was your experience at the Arnold Lake? Because um, it was just, uh, what, what was that like being there this year um, and still kind of being in the midst of it all? You know, it was interesting for people in the industry, we'll call them industry people, um, it was surprisingly normal. I mean, it really wasn't much different at all. Mm -hmm. The biggest difference was there was no fans, you know what I mean? But uh, for us, it was it was kind of normal. You know, saw, saw the regular faces, regular people. Mm -hmm. You know, we did as much as we could do. Um, you know that, that didn't get affected you know that you it, it was really odd it was weird because they, they allowed people to come in for some things and not for others so uh you know they were one of the first people had to deal with all this garbage but um it, it, like you say it wasn't that much different for me really honestly <laughs> <laughs> were you were you concerned because people are coming from all over the world there were you concerned for your own health no nah, not really i think it's a lot i think a lot of it's overblown um you know i got my own thoughts on it you know but you know, it's it would be much more widespread if it was that easily transmitted. And you know, we took precautions as anybody. You know, you got the hand sanitizer and all that stuff. But what are you going to do? You know, mm -hmm. so um, I don't know. I, you know, it's I guess it's one of those wait and see type of things. You know, you're a brand at this point. You're the voice of bodybuilding, right? What is the future of your brand? How do you see you know next year to two years unfolding for you? Uh, well. Right now, the brand is pretty much shut down. <laughs> there's no shows. There's no. I've got, you know, I'm not in a good spot right now. I've got uh, two ways I basically make most of my income, and that is uh, emceeing shows, of course, all over the world. Which is, which is, and, is constantly, right? Every week almost is a, is a show you probably have seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, there's been years it's been as much as, you know, uh, almost 40 appearances, you know. So, uh, and I've got my own shows uh, overseas. Now, if, if uh, God be willing, um, the Ben Weeder, which is slated for next week, is still on in the UK. Um, they've actually taken a different approach over there. They haven't really shut everything down like they have here. Uh, and we've actually got a good amount of people signed up, so that's that's promising. But I've got eight shows overseas with my partner Ian and our Two Bros brand, and then uh, two shows, uh, well, I shouldn't say here in America, one in Canada with Mindy O'Brien and our uh, uh, Two Chicks Productions. Yeah, a little... Thing out of words there, Black. Uh, in Austin, Texas, with uh, Ed, per Ed and Betty Pariso, uh, that we have slated for August, thank God, because it looks like those will go on. So, um, you know, everything was going great until this whole thing hit. So, it's not just for me, it's a, a lot of people are in the same boat, but there is literally no business right now. All the shows have been shut down at least until May, uh, which Jim Mannion just put that out the other day. Uh, and that's what we have to do. I mean, there's nothing going on, the gyms are shut down, nobody can train. Nobody can do cardio, and, and certainly nobody's thinking about getting ready for a competition right now when they've got kids are home from school, you know, all hell's broken yeah. there. So hopefully this stuff will change real quick. Um, what I think is going to happen is uh, a few weeks it's going to be a little crazy. Then things are going to start to lighten up. I say by May 1, things are starting to get back to normal, and then there's just going to be a huge push of shows um, to get people qualified. Obviously, uh, we as a... Uh, Federation will look at you know lifting certain guidelines because otherwise you just wouldn't have anybody qualified yeah, to go yeah. to shows. So you know we have to look at some different options of that, which I'm I'm, I'm sure the uh, the boys are doing right now. 
Um, they've already put out a, a mandate that they're extending the Olympia qualifications until the end of August now. Um, so that'll give a little bit more time for pros to compete. Um, I was just talking to Ian today. We had the British uh, pro that we were going to put out second year uh, in May. Clearly, I think we're going to we're going to move that. I, I believe until August we have our British finals that are there, which is a big amateur show there. I think we're just going to combine those um, and then give an, an opportunity for pros to uh, get ready for the Olympia. The Olympia is going to be outstanding. Um, I don't think any of this stuff will have any impact by then. Um, the show goes on again. Dan Solomon, the crew, Tamer. Everybody's making provisions, um, but I think the changes you're going to be able to see with a guy in charge now that has passion, uh, that has the, the financial restitution, mm -hmm. um, and, and the foresight. Again, Jake is willing to listen to people that know this this industry. Uh, that's huge because there are things that we can be doing that would make things much more entertaining. Um, I think, and, and I've said this for 20 years in interviews. You can go back and look. Um, entertainment's the key, man. We got to make this stuff more exciting. It's no fun if listen if, if you got to have good guys and bad guys, man. You know, evil versus good. You know that that type of stuff. Otherwise, it ain't no fun. Like you mentioned, uh, King and, and Craig. Listen, that stuff was outstanding back in the day because people hated either one of them. <laughs> you loved and you hated Craig, or vice versa, or you just hated them both. But either way, you had passion for it. You had an opinion on it, you know, and that made it interesting. Mm -hmm. That famous uh, footage with those two going at it on stage, I, I believe it might have been, that might have been in, in, uh, over in the UK, but it was, it was one of those shows. They were battling it out for fourth and fifth. They were battling for the win, but you know what? It was most more of the exciting stuff because everybody knows they hated each other's mm -hmm. guts, and they're on stage and they're kind of poking fun at each other and this and that, you know, and it was, it was real. But that's the kind of passion we need to bring back to the sport. All right? And I'm in for anything that can bring interest excitement make it entertaining if you know again not hokey we don't have to go back to the wbf days and what they tried with vince mcmahon and all the weird stuff you don't need all that stuff we've got characters we've got people we've got rivalries we got things we just need to be able to put it out there uh, um and hopefully we're going to be able to bring some of these things uh, to everybody in the coming months to, to make some of this stuff you know uh you, you got to be able to follow along you know we don't have a weekly game like the nfl mm -hmm. you know where you follow along for you right. know that's what we need, weekly interest, every other week interest, that type of thing, to follow the ball, the bouncing ball until you get to Olympia weekend. Now you care, you know? I don't care whether you're going to watch somebody win or you're watching somebody get their ass kicked. At least you're watching. 